One of the biggest mysteries in the solar system today, one that was not even known about until relatively recently, is that the juxtaposition of certain objects in the far outer solar system bear a kind of fingerprint of having been shepherded and clustered there by some kind of a gravitational process. The natural go-to for this has been an undiscovered planet, known as Planet Nine, which may be responsible for the positions of these objects through the influence of its gravity. That is the simplest answer. This hypothesis, championed by Mike Brown and Constantine Batigan, links to Event Horizon interviews I did with Constantine for further information in the description below, seemed to hold a huge amount of promise that it would add another large planet to the solar system's family as we see it. And it might even represent one of the most exotic objects in the solar system, and that it may be the core of a former gas giant laid bare for us to study in whatever form something like that might be on the order of 10 times the mass of Earth. But Planet Nine, should it exist, has always been an object that should have been discoverable if it indeed is there. Even a large planet very far out in the outer solar system isn't easy to find, but it's not impossible with today's equipment and search algorithms. This is much easier to do today than when Clyde Tombaugh had to visually search photographic plates, flipping from one to another looking for movement. But he was successful and found Pluto, but partly due to luck. The big problem with Planet Nine isn't seeing it, however. It should be bright enough. It's not knowing where in the sky to look for it. There's a lot of real estate to cover as to where it might be. More recent work by Brown, Batigan, and colleagues, link in the description below, has significantly narrowed the search area down. The first data set they used is from PanStars in Hawaii, and they were able to narrow down the search area significantly. Additional data sets allowed them to reduce it even more. And as a result, they've eliminated about 78% of the area where the hypothetical planet could be. The experiment that will finally likely answer the question will be the LSST at the Vera Rubin Observatory that is set to see first light at the end of this year and commence science observations next year. This should cover the remaining area of where Planet Nine could be. It'll either be there or it won't. But there is a huge question here. What happens if they don't find it? This is where this gets weird because while it may seem like a very big claim that there is another planet in the solar system, it's not that big of a claim because we do indeed live in a star system full of planets and it's certainly possible for us to have missed one in the distance hard to observe until recently in the outer solar system. And in this case, if the effects on the objects out there are real, a planet is the simplest answer. Moreover, Planet Nine doesn't really have the obvious gravitational tug on the ice giants that have in the past spawned claims of another planet, such as a formerly unexplained perturbation of Neptune that was knocked out when more calculation was done. But that's just it. This has happened before. There have been other planets hypothesized before that ended up not being there. A very good example of this was the so-called Planet Vulcan, which was observed, actually visually observed, orbiting within the orbit of Mercury very close to the Sun. This story involves the eminent astronomer Urbain Le Verrier, who had under his belt the prediction of the planet Neptune based again on perturbations in Uranus's orbit, and lo and behold, Neptune was there. He saw similar oddities in regards to Mercury, now understood or eliminated, that led him to the idea that they might be due to the presence of planets or an asteroid group inside the orbit of Mercury. An observation by an amateur astronomer that year of something passing in front of the Sun inside Mercury's orbit bolstered this, and led Le Verrier to announce the discovery. And then, effectively, no one ever saw it again, and now we know it doesn't exist. But the asteroids still may. An experiment to look to see if there are any is slated for the upcoming solar eclipse. But with Planet Nine, this is a very different issue, because if you eliminate its existence, then what put those Kuiper Belt objects into those strange clusterings and inclinations? Initially, there were questions about observer bias. It was originally based on a small number of objects. But as this played out, an increasing number of objects have been found that also show the strange effects of something in the outer solar system affecting them. Other recently discovered strangeness includes very large perihelions of the orbits of some Kuiper Belt objects objects that pass inside the orbit of Neptune, 
and some objects moving retrograde or backwards. All of these would make perfect sense if Planet 9 were found. But if you don't find a planet, then you may have left the world of the mundane. Notwithstanding that the discovery of a solar system planet is not an everyday occurrence. Incidentally, there are two other hypotheses suggesting outer solar system planets. One is the so-called Planet 10, a Mars-sized object that might explain a certain drop-off of outer solar system material known as the Kuiper Cliff, along with several other suggestions that there may be other somewhat large objects out there, and maybe even a captured, very distantly orbiting ex-rogue planet. But there's a chance that searches with Vera Rubin will, or will not, also discover these objects along with more minor planets. But without the very large Planet 9, then there aren't a lot of other things that could be causing the irregularities of the Kuiper Belt objects. But one option is pretty exotic. The reason we don't see the object producing the gravity is because it's very small, and it's also a black hole. This is the idea of a primordial black hole orbiting the Sun, an object left over from the formation of the universe. This type of black hole is not like the massive stellar collapse black holes most of us are familiar with. They are far lower mass and stem from a hypothetical possibility about the early universe that might have allowed black holes of very small sizes. These are far lower mass and stem from a hypothetical possibility about the early universe that might have allowed black holes of various small sizes to spontaneously collapse under those conditions. And some think that some of them, if large enough but still small, might have made it to today without evaporating completely. If this is the case and there is a small black hole in the outer solar system, then it's worth noting two key things. First is that it poses no danger. It's small, low mass, and has been there for a very long time, probably since the formation of the solar system. And if it were a problem, it would have made that known already. The second is that having a stable black hole in the solar system would be a boon to physics like nothing else. Imagine what you could learn from something like that. Black hole science would finally become less theory and more fact, with a greater understanding of them just by virtue of being safely near a small one. Another option, just recently released, is much, much bigger and potentially may rank among the most important scientific discoveries in physics in decades if it is indeed the case. If we find no planet, and we never find the black hole if that's ever possible to do so, but there have been ideas as of late that we might actually be able to search for one out there, and that it might not be invisible, then we still have all these issues with the motion of objects in the outer solar system. This new work proposes, in a nutshell, that our theory of gravity is simply wrong. Here Mond rears its head. MOND, or Modified Newtonian Dynamics, is an alternate explanation to the motion of galaxies that does not necessarily need to invoke dark matter, or at least much of it. In most forms, it doesn't entirely eliminate it, though. In the most accepted scenario, galaxies rotate as we observe them due to the presence of gravitational material that we simply can't see, i.e. dark matter, but we don't know what it is. In MOND, however, the rotation is explained by a different take on gravity and how it operates with objects moving slowly at the edges of galaxies. In short, gravity behaves differently at different accelerations. The problem with MOND is that when you invoke it and try to use it to predict what we see with other phenomena in the universe, it generally stops working. Dark matter, however, generally does not. When you account for it, you see its fingerprint and other things most recently being found leaving its mark on the cosmic microwave background radiation. But MOND continues to sizzle in the background, because in other ways it would be a whole lot simpler than dark matter. The new research by Catherine Brown and Harsh Mathur, linked to the paper below, took it from a different angle. Look for evidence for MOND in the solar system itself. Could the effects of what we think is Planet 9 actually represent an indication that there may finally be something to Mond. The approach they took was to see if the existence of Planet 9 ruled Mond out. The idea was this. If Mond is correct, then over the course of the history of the solar system, there would have been enough time for objects in the outer solar system to show some alignment to the galaxy's overall gravitational field. The sample needs to be bigger. We've only discovered a small fraction of what's out there but they noted that what we do see is consistent with this kind of MOND alignment. 
If Planet 9 is never found, then this will need to be studied further, and might indicate, if not Mond, some kind of new physics is at play in this. However, if Planet 9 is found, or if the sample we have of the outer solar system objects is observationally biased and too incomplete, then all of this goes away. And there's still the problem of Mond not really predicting what we see, whereas dark matter almost always does. Mond isn't on as stable of ground, but if Planet 9 is not found, and remember the search is 72% complete and counting, then one of the most titanic shifts in physics might occur from this above and beyond merely discovering a new planet. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently wondering what happens if Planet 10 is found before Planet 9, especially if Planet 9 turned out to not exist. That would be weird and confusing. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live. <laughs>